Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, we're going to react to America's toughest prison. Now, America, you know, has a lot of incredibly, you know, tough prisons. I've heard crazy stories about San Quentin, about Rikers Island, even though Rikers Island, I think is technically a jail. What goes on in Rikers Island is absolutely crazy. It's, it's, it's insane. You know, there's other prisons as well that are quite, uh, you know, notorious. Um, but yeah, for this one to be the toughest one, it's called the Florence Supermax. Now, I think um, the top category of prison is just a, a maximum security prison. So I don't know whether, I, I, this is genuinely the first time I've heard of a Supermax. Like how, I'm trying to think of how it can be even more stifling than a maximum security prison where, you know, you're spending the vast majority of your time in a tiny cell, effectively a toilet, right? A toilet with a bunk bed in there. Like, how could this be worse? I'm genuinely intrigued. This video is brought to you by Trends, the online community specifically for business and tech entrepreneurs. Get a two week trial for just $1 by visiting trends.co slash geographics. More on them in a bit. All right, let's go. It seems like something you'd see in a movie. One of the world's most secure prisons built to house the worst of the worst offenders. It is home to a veritable rogues gallery of criminals, terrorists, bombers, mob bosses, drug kingpins, spies, and murderers. These men live in solitary confinement in cells that are purposefully designed to prevent prisoners from escaping or causing wow. a disruption. In other words, it's hell on earth. But this place isn't the invention of an author's imagination. It's very real. The USP Florence Admax, located near Florence, Colorado, is the United States' federal government's supermax prison, where they keep inmates who are too violent, too dangerous, or too much of a threat to national security. Okay, so it seems like this is the only supermax prison in America. Wow. The only one kept anywhere else. And it is also one of the country's most controversial prisons. While some claim it makes everyone safer, including the prisoners, others have called it a clean version of hell and in violation of the US Constitution's Eighth Amendment, oh barring cruel and unusual punishment. But why was this steel and concrete monolith built? How does it work? And who exactly is sent there? I guess it's like the worst of the worst, isn't it? In the latter half of the 20th century, officials in the Federal Bureau of Prisons found themselves dealing with a problem. How do you punish criminals who have already been sentenced to life imprisonment and who commit murder while in prison? In the past, the solution would have been to execute them, but capital punishment has been on the wane in the United States for years. For instance, only three people were executed by the US federal government between 1963 and 2020. The problem is wow. prisoners serving life sentences Only three? No way. Did he? by the US federal government between 1963 and Hold on a minute. In the past, the solution would have been to execute them, but capital punishment has been on the wane in the United States for years. For instance, only three people were executed by the US federal government between 1963 and 2020. The wow, is that true? I thought the number would be way bigger than that. Because I, I hear about people on death row all the time. I'm guessing just because you're on death row doesn't mean you actually get executed. Only three people in almost 60 years. That can't be right. As prisoners serving life sentences are among the most dangerous, often with a history of violence, and they have nothing to lose. This makes them dangerous to other prisoners and to the prison guards as well. 26 federal corrections officers have been murdered by inmates in the line of duty. Two of these officers, Merle Cutts and Robert Hoffman, were stabbed to death on October 22, 1983 by members of the prison gang, the Aryan Brotherhood, at the federal prison in Marion, Illinois. At that time, the prison in Marion was where the federal government sent its worst offenders. It was an old-style, open population prison with very little to differentiate it from lower security facilities, except for the amount of violent incidents. The murder of the two guards prompted Norman Carlson, the director of the Bureau of Prisons, to take action. He ordered that Marion Prison be locked down permanently. He yeah, I get you have to do something in response to that. You know, you have to. If staff are getting murdered, you have to do something to protect them. That the inmates who had murdered the guards were already serving life sentences and sentencing them to additional time did nothing to deter them. The solution, therefore, was to keep them isolated from each other and from the guards as much as possible. The Supermax prison had been born. Mm. 
At Marion, permanent lockdown meant keeping prisoners in their cells in solitary confinement for 22 to 23 hours a day, only being let out for an hour or two to exercise or for other things that couldn't be done in their cell. This control unit, or super maximum security, later shortened to just supermax, was considered the harshest confinement conditions allowed under federal law, reserved only for the worst of the worst. However, Norman Carlson petitioned the US government to go even further. The permanent wow. lockdown at Marion was a good start, but what the BOP really needed was a purpose-built facility where the Supermax concept could be put into practice more effectively than at Marion. Carlson continued to advocate for this facility even after his retirement in 1987. Finally, as part of the Clinton administration's pledge to be tough on crime, they allocated $60 million to build a dedicated Supermax facility. Residents of rural Fremont County, Colorado, already had three federal prisons as neighbors, but welcomed the construction of an additional prison on the Florence complex. It promised to provide around 800 permanent jobs, plus hundreds of more temporary construction jobs. The residents raised $160,000 to purchase 600 acres of land to give to the government to build the prison on. USP Florence Wow, so the people of the area funded the purchase of the land themselves. <laughs> they really, really wanted it. I guess all of those jobs, you know, it, it's going to pay off. It, it pays off, you know, like the income from that. Yeah. Max opened in November 1994, and prisoners soon filled its state-of-the-art cells. But let's set the Supermax aside for a sec and for a word from our newest sponsor, Trends. Trends is the online community built profit margin thousands of weeks for only a dollar. Ninety-five percent of the prisoners who end up at the Florence Supermax are transferred from other facilities in the federal system or at the request of state prison systems. These inmates, almost all of whom are serving lengthy sentences, have a history of either violent behavior towards other prisoners or guards, or a history of escape attempts. For these prisoners, the idea is not to keep them here permanently. Guards of Florence operate on a three-year program. For the first year, the prisoner is kept in complete isolation in his cell for 23 hours a day, and his meals and anything else he may need is brought to him in his cell and pushed through a slot in the cell door. If the prisoner shows good behavior, he may be let out for longer periods of time, including being allowed to interact with other prisoners. At the end of three years, if he hasn't caused additional disruptions, he can be transferred out of Florence to a less restrictive facility to serve out the remainder of his sentence. The cells at Florence are built to prevent a prisoner from doing anything to harm. <sighs> Obviously, I have to remember that the people in this place are the worst of the worst, right? They've committed absolute atrocities. <sighs> But to think, you know, that you'll have to be like, you have to live by yourself in a tiny cell for a year, a year. And then if you're good, if you don't mentally break down, then you get maybe a bit of time with other people. Is that humane? I guess these people are never going to be released into the general public, are they? These people are all lifers, aren't they? But does that mean we should disregard their sanity? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to think. What do you guys think? Self or others. Each cell has a bed, stool, and desk made out of poured concrete that melds seamlessly with the floor and walls, making them immovable. The toilet has its own valve on it that can be shut off if the prisoner tries to flood the cell by blocking it up. The cell has a built in shower that operates on a timer, also to prevent flooding. The sink does not have a tap, just buttons to prevent the prisoner from disassembling the plumbing on it to use as a weapon. Each cell also has a window four inches wide and four feet long that is designed to prevent a prisoner from knowing exactly where in the facility they're located, hindering any escape planning. As a further security measure, the inmates are rotated into different cells every three months. Each cell has a camera monitoring the inmates' activities inside the cell, one of over 1,400 throughout the complex. For one hour a day, inmates are taken out of their cells to an exercise pit, which looks like an empty concrete swimming pool. It is also designed to prevent prisoners from knowing where they are within the prison, and it is only big enough for a prisoner to walk 10 steps in a straight line or 31 steps in a circle. Their cells can also be fitted with a TV and radio, and they are provided with books or other items that the guards deem safe for them to have. While at Florence, prisoners aren't permitted visitors and usually aren't permitted to have any contact with the outside world, not even through letters or phone calls. Florence has been called escape-proof because of its heavy security. It has over 1,400 remote-controlled steel doors and motion detectors and cameras are everywhere. In the control center, corrections officers monitor the inmates 24 hours a day. They have a panic button, which can trigger a prison-wide lockdown that shuts every door in the prison if they suspect an escape attempt is in progress. If, by some chance, a prisoner makes it out of the building, they still have to contend with the perimeter featuring pressure pads and a 12-foot high fence topped with razor wire as well as regular patrols of armed guards who are trained to shoot to kill rather than Man, you are not getting out of this place. 
You are not getting out of this place. <laughs> I don't even think prison break. I don't think they could get out of this place. This place sounds like hell. But I guess you need to have some kind of deterrent. You know, you do. I'm, I'm, I'm so, my mind is completely split here. It really is. Allow a dangerous prisoner to escape custody. Sounds awful. The other 5% of the inmates are permanent residents. Almost all of them have life sentences, meaning they will never leave the supermax. These inmates are truly the worst criminals the government has in their system, and are kept permanently at Florence because of the danger they pose to other inmates or guards, as an additional punishment for the infamy of their crimes they were convicted of, or because the possibility of them escaping would be very harmful to national security. These prisoners are a who's who of infamous criminals, men whose crimes provoked national and international outrage. One cell block at Florence is known as Bombers Row because of who is housed there. Wow. Terry Nichols, convicted of helping build the bomb that Timothy McVeigh used to blow up a federal building in Oklahoma City in 1995, killing 168 people. Ramsey Youssef, convicted of the 1993 World Trade Center bombing that killed six. Eric Robert Rudolph, a Christian fundamentalist who bombed abortion clinics and gay bars and was also convicted of detonating a bomb in Centennial Park in Atlanta during the 1996 Summer Olympics. And Ted Kaczynski, known as the Unabomber, who waged a one man campaign of terror for 17 years. His male bombs wow. killed three and injured 23 others. Other terrorists kept at the Florence Supermax include Al-Qaeda operatives like Zacharias Massau, Richard Reed, the shoe bomber, and Umar Abdulmutalab, the underwear bomber. Joe Kartsanev, who along with his brother bombed the finish line of the Boston Marathon in 2013, is currently incarcerated at Florence while awaiting resentencing. If he is resentenced to death for his crimes, he will be moved to the facility at Tara Hoyt, Indiana, where the federal government's death row is located. Another category of prisoner here are leaders of organized- Oh wow, so if you're on death row, row you there's only one prison that houses all the people that are on death row in the country oh i thought that every maximum security prison had its own like death row syndicates. For these men, they are kept here to prevent them from continuing to run their criminal enterprises from behind bars, as has been done in the past. Prominence among them is Joaquin Guzman, known as El Chapo, who led Mexico's Sinaloa cartel, one of the country's largest and most violent. Guzman was extradited from Mexico in 2017 and sentenced to life in prison in 2019. Didn't this guy break out of prison like three times or something? <laughs> I think I, yeah, I think he did. Leaders of other criminal gangs in Florence as well, from the Chicago Outfit, the Latin Kings, Aryan Brotherhood, Gangster Disciples, East Coast Bloods, and the Black Peace Stones. The final major category of permanent prisoners at Florence are those convicted of espionage, especially U.S. citizens caught passing information to foreign governments. Chief among these is Robert Hansen, who was an FBI agent who was supposed to be working on counterintelligence, but instead served as a spy for the Soviet Union and the Russian Federation from 1979 wow. to 2001. His information caused several agents working within the Soviet Union to be exposed and executed. He, along with wow. former CIA agent Aldrich Ames, committed what are considered the worst intelligence breaches in U.S. history. <sighs> Double agent. The Supermax concept caught on in the years after Florence AdMax opened. State prison systems across America opened Supermaxes of their own, either as standalone facilities or as special wings of lower security prisons. The Alcatraz of the Rockies, as the Florence facility became known, seemed to be an unqualified success. But before long, some began to question whether housing prisoners in permanent solitary confinement was humane. Solit I'm sh like I'm sure the uh, mental health of the people in there is just complete, like bottom. These people are probably insane. Not that we should care. This is the thing that I'm really contending with. It's like, should I care about their mental health? Should I? These people didn't care about the victims, did they? They didn't care about the people whose lives they ruined and affected. By committing these crimes so why should i care about their mental health oh man first came to prominence what do you guys think do you care about their mental health do you think it's too much too extreme or do you think they deserve this in the united states in the 19th century and prisons in pennsylvania the quakers who ran these prisons believed isolating prisoners was more humane than other punishments like flogging with a whip common at the time they also believed that it would give the prisoner time to reflect on his misdeeds and to restore his relationship with God. However, soon after they started implementing it, they started noticing a profound psychological effect on inmates who were in solitary confinement for extended periods. Human beings are inherently social creatures, and when they are isolated from 
other people for a long time, it can cause their mental health to deteriorate. Inmates yeah. have shown increased levels of anxiety and depression, problems with sleeping and nightmares, lower levels of brain function, and in extreme cases, hallucinations, talking to themselves, and self-harm. As early as 1890, the United States Supreme Court found that prisoners in solitary confinement had reduced mental and physical capabilities. Still, throughout the 20th century, prisons used solitary confinement as a punishment within prisons for misbehavior. A series of court challenges have been made against the practice, usually charging that it violates the Eighth Amendment to the United States Constitution, which bars the federal government from inflicting cruel and unusual and punishment unusual on punishment. convicted criminals. Uh, there has been, as yet, no definitive Supreme Court ruling on whether solitary confinement is permissible under the Constitution, though certain practices at state prisons have been found to be unnecessarily cruel. The United Nations, meanwhile, has declared that solitary confinement of juveniles and mentally ill prisoners, who are both considered at particular risk to be inhumane illegal. and yeah. to keep anyone in solitary confinement for longer than 15 days, is a form of torture that shouldn't be allowed. Nevertheless, the United States prison system, both at the federal and the state level, continues to employ the practice. Because the problem is, what do you do you like, in, to substitute for this? Like, how do you protect the guards and the general public from people who, you know, like, like this? How, what do you do with them? Maybe let them, I don't know, if you, if you can keep them in the Florence Supermax, but maybe give them like two hours a day of like social time where maybe through a glass thing they can communicate with other prisoners, because that could be a compromise. Arguing that it is the only way to ensure that other prisoners and corrections officers are safe from the most violent offenders. There have not been as many specific complaints about the conditions at the Florence Supermax as there have been at other facilities that have Supermax units. This is because Florence is a modern, purpose-built facility and has adequate funding from the federal government to keep the facility updated and properly staffed, as opposed to state-run facilities which can suffer from overcrowding and a lack of proper funding. Florence is also not supposed to house juvenile offenders or prisoners known to be mentally ill, as their harsh, punitive model is not considered appropriate for them. Nonetheless, a class-action lawsuit was filed against the Bureau of Prisons in 2011, alleging that up to 100 prisoners were housed there that shouldn't have been because of undiagnosed or poorly diagnosed mental illnesses. This wow, so is that what it looks like from the sky? I mean, you're, even if you somehow managed to get through the, the steel doors, get past the cameras, get over the fence, get away from the, uh, the, the people with the snipers, Avoid the pressure sensors. <laughs> You've still got to get through miles and miles of will of wilderness and empty space. It's just you, this place is unescapable, man. That shouldn't have been because of undiagnosed or poorly diagnosed mental illnesses. Despite the preventative measures in place, eight inmates have committed suicide at Florence since it opened, wow. and the lawsuits allege that these were caused by prison officials not being adequately trained to spot and respond to signs of mental illness in prisoners. The two parties eventually came to a settlement agreement in 2016, in which the Bureau agreed to enact better protocols, and over 100 inmates were transferred to other facilities. Still, despite the controversy, there is no sign that the solitary confinement model at the Florence Supermax is going anywhere. Even Human Rights Watch, which argues against solitary confinement on constitutional grounds, stated that after touring the prison, that Florence implements the practice better than anywhere else in the country. As time has gone by, the Federal Bureau of Prisons has cut down on the number of Supermax units within their system, transferring all the so-called hard cases to Florence. After 23 years, the permanent lockdown of the facility in Marion was lifted, and it has been downgraded to a medium security prison. Today, Florence is the only Supermax facility for male prisoners within the Federal system, largely due to how expensive they are and the special training that corrections officers need to undergo in order to be qualified to work at them. And because most prisoners who are sent there only remain for a few years, Florence has never been a full capacity. But as long as there are except I see, yeah, I forgot about that. The majority of people are only there for like three years. <sighs> yeah, so I think I think he said five percent of the people that are that are in there are there for life, like which Guess isn't so bad. Only violent offenders in the federal prison system, as long as the worst of the worst continue to commit crimes both in and out of prison, as long as segregating these inmates into solitary confinement is thought to be the best way to deal with them, there will always be a need for the Florence Supermax, the Alcatraz of the Rockies. So, man, what an awful place, awful, horrible place. I mean, yeah, I guess I guess you're not going to end up there unless you deserve to be there, I suppose. 
that's something that I need to come to terms with. Like, I think, you know, as much as I naturally feel some kind of empathy for these people, I really shouldn't because for them to end up there, the majority of them, you know, have been in a normal prison and then have committed something so bad but they've been sent there. So they kind of deserve to be there. In a, like if they didn't, they could have behaved differently and avoided that place. So, you know, the fact that they're in solitary confinement for 23 hours a day, that's their fault. It's their own fault. And even the other 5% of the people that are there permanently, again, it's their own fault. They made the choice to do that atrocity that led them there. So I kind of have to maybe justify it to myself that way. But yeah, it just sounds absolutely awful. I don't think I would last, I probably wouldn't last a week in that place. I, I it would, oh man, it would be horrible. 23 hours a day in a tiny cell. It would be absolutely dreadful. No window, no view of the outside world, no seeing another human face. But, but I guess they get an hour. They get an hour, don't they, of like exercise. So I guess they would see a guard. So they see another person. But yeah, even still, it sounds absolutely horrific. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.